Mr. Munger, thank you very much for joining us again. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, the shareholders meeting, from all accounts, from people I've talked to, have said, you know, went very well. You know, a lot of people appreciate it, how, you know, Warren Buffett just tackled the Lubrizol, Sokol, um, you know, situation directly. Um, you elicited a bit of a chuckle from the audience when you said something to the effect that the uh, initial press release written by Buffett wasn't the most cleverest in the world. Um, what would you have done differently? Well, I don't think I want to redraft that press release right here. <laughs> but it's very cum cumbersome when you've got a man with enormous virtues and some blind spots and you want to be fair in praising his virtues, and yet you don't want to excuse the blind spot. It's an awkward subject with these conflicting considerations. And it was difficult, and all I can say is we, we could have done better. I understand, I understand that you don't want to redraft or, or, or look back too much, but, but knowing now what you know... Obviously, if it made it more complete in the first place, it would have been better. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but knowing now what you know about what transpired between David Sokol and Lou Brizol and, and the bankers, um, would you have chosen then, would you and Buffett have chosen at that point to actually let David Sokol go versus allowing him to resign? I don't think I want to go into hypotheticals, but you heard Warren say that the behavior was inexplicable and inexcusable. Well, if it's inexcusable, you can draw your own considerations. Mm. Your own conclusions, I mean. Um, if I may, I wanted to go get some facts straight. Because I know that, that you and, and Mr. Buffett wanted to make sure that, that all the facts were out there. Um, there seems to be the, the two sides are, are saying two different things about whether or not Sokol had been contacted during the audit committee investigation. Yeah, I don't want to get into the last detail of who said exactly what on what date. I wouldn't even remember, and I wasn't there at all of them. But, but, but I want to just read for you, though, because David Sokol came out through his lawyer with a statement, um, and, and he said specifically, every question asked of Mr. Sokol on or prior to March 30th and any information requested of him has been provided. The audit committee report, which was prepared by the law firm of Munger, Tolls, and Olson, contains errors and omissions, both of which could have been avoided if the audit committee had inquired of Mr. Sokol. I don't want to get into that last little bit of argument between lawyers. They're always going to disagree about some little fact or point of emphasis. I'm only interested in the big picture. And in the big picture, well, you had a very talented, dedicated man who had some blind spots and stumbled into something that, that was, as Warren said, inexplicable and inexcusable. That's the substance of what happened. That doesn't mean we don't continue to admire the man's many good qualities. Mm -hmm. Did this completely come out of left field for you? Well, of course. If we thought it was coming, we would have been smart enough to ask when he bought the stock. Right. But no, it came out of left field. Well, what I mean by that, Mr. Munger, is, is were there any signs beforehand that, um, y you know, that Mr. Sokol um, you know, could have done something like this or, or, or that he had some character issues, you know, that could have resulted in something like this? I would not have expected any character issue. I think he's a bit pugnacious and determined. And uh, so in that sense, you could imagine him stumbling into some controversy. And, uh, but no, apart from that, I would have no reason at all to expect. The truth of the matter is it was crazy. It was a, there was a definite lapse of judgment here. What he did was crazy. Yeah. Um, describe to me your relationship with David Sokol during the time. Well, it's not close, but I certainly have admired him because he's solved so many problems for us, and he's the kind of a man, when he has something to do, he just rolls up his sleeves and to, works at it hard until it's done. So he's, he's a very remarkable 
executive. Is there anyone at Berkshire now? And quite smart. Oh, absolutely, and 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 you know, oft repeated that that you know his his business know-how was was very important at Berkshire. So I, I wonder, um, is there anybody at within Berkshire now who could step up to do some of what he was doing already at Berkshire? There are certain things that he would do better than anybody we have, but for the great bulk of what he did. Uh, we have plenty of depth of management to handle it. And in some cases, the people will do them better than he would, which is what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. That some things would be done worse and some better after he left. But it almost, from what I've, what I've read, is uh, oftentimes you would bounce off investment ideas with him, is that right? No, I, I called on him to, to study BYD. Okay because he's an engineer and he was making himself very useful to Warren and, and BYD is a high-tech business and I thought if two of us got convinced we'd have a better chance of getting Warren to authorize an investment. Mm -hmm. So that's the only time I've really worked closely with David, but it was very successful. Mm -hmm. David has had a lot of success in life, which he deserved. Is Berkshire going to suffer without somebody like him anymore within the company? Well, the right answer is no, but that's also true. You take somebody who's even more remarkable, Warren, in my opinion, Berkshire will flourish after Warren's gone. I don't think anybody is, is essential given the momentum we now have in place. Uh, Mr. Munger, I know that on Monday you'll have a board meeting. Yeah. Um, we were talking with Howard Buffett, and he said some of these issues, you know, will likely be raised again at the board. It'll of be course. the first time all the directors will be physically together yes. since all of this transpired. Uh, what do you think are some of the questions that you'll uh, be answering, and some of the issues that will have to be raised? Well, of course, the board is going to discuss an issue like this because how often do we have one like this? Once every twenty-five years? Hopefully, never. But yeah, yeah, but but <laughs> once every twenty-five years, you've got some glitch. And of course it'll be discussed, but it's the nature of good enterprises that they know how to accept a change, even a sudden unexpected change, and go on quite creditably. And that's exactly what will happen at Berkshire. Is there any consideration of, of changing in some ways the way some of the CEOs are supervised, or not at all? Well, I would say that the Berkshire system, which has worked very well for about 50 years, maybe we have a couple of near scandals, <laughs> one every 25 years. <laughs> I think that's a good record. I don't think human nature allows you to get a record much better than that. And our system for doing that is to select very trustworthy people and trust them immensely, and that's worked very well for us, and people become more and more trustworthy when they've been trusted and it's successful, and then they're trusted more and it's successful and so on. It's the most efficient kind of organization you can possibly have, is a seamless web of deserved trust, but Mr. Murray, and that's what we're trying to do, and why would we change it? when it's worked so well, just because we've had one glitch. But a year ago, today, you would have said the same thing, and yeah, you sure. would have said the same thing about David Sokol, right? Sure. Sure, but I, it's... I, I think Berkshire, you just have to think about it, being so decentralized already with so much trust, there's less to do at headquarters to have it work well, and, and that makes transition easy. Mm. And it also means we don't need a hundred new wonderful people, we just need one. And we've got several people who'd be perfectly acceptable as CEO, so you know, the Mungers intend to hold shares at Berkshire for many decades into the, into the future. 
I'm not slightly worried about about Berkshire. I raise the issue only because I I'm think Berkshire will do well after Warren dies, and if if we can spare Warren, we can spare <laughs> Sokol. I, I, I raise the issue only because some have said, you know, perhaps it, Berkshire, you know, a more than $200 billion company has grown to a point where perhaps a decentralized structure may need to change. Yeah, most of the people who talk that way have never managed anything successfully. Hmm. You know, they're pundits. But we have a successful operation. And many of the underlying businesses are the best of their kind in the world. And so why would we do it the way the pundits want instead of the way this worked for us? Have you talked with David Sokol since he left? No. Did you ever plan on it? Or no, no. Any reason for that? Well, I've got no objection, objection to it, but he's so decisive and so action prone and he's got his own life to rearrange and he, he, he's he's the type that makes his own decisions mm. he's not asking anyone for advice on that and and so there'd be absolutely no reason to expect a lot of contact would you have any advice for him right now i don't believe in trying to change adults that are of the age he is. Uh, in my own case, as I said earlier this weekend on a different source, I think I fixed one flaw in my life. I got over having tantrums when I was about four or five. <laughs> but every other flaw I have, I haven't fixed. I've just counterbalanced it with <laughs> offsetting virtues. And I think Sokol is a lot like me in that respect. So <laughs> I think most people have to do that. I'll bet in your own life you fix damn few flaws, but that you've counterbalanced a lot of flaws with, with virtues that will carry the freight. I think that's what we're dealing with here. Hmm. Mr. Munger, some of, you know, have also said that, you know, since this came to light, you know, with David Sokol, that um, it only drove home the point even more that you know he was in fact one of the successors to Warren Buffett and I know it's an issue that gets raised constantly but what, we're what, not going to tell you the, anything what, about what, succession what, except that we're not worried about him. what would be the disadvantage though now that Mr. Sokol is no longer with the company to acknowledge that he was in fact a front-runner at least to run Berkshire Hathaway what would be the disadvantage we didn't do that before he left. Why would we be going into it now? There's a lot to be said in my judgment. You got somebody as able as Warren as to wring him out to the very last drop. Uh, Warren has not lost any significant ability in the first 80 years and he is very good at what he does. And and the Berkshire system is to, is to let executives stay as long as they're productive. Mm. Other people have a different system. And the minute you start anointing successors, it's just causing a lot of confusion. How is Todd Combs doing? Well, he's fine, but of course, he's just getting started. And, and of course, Berkshire is a shrewd investor that doesn't like high prices <laughs> and so it'll take him a while to really get settled in. And you're giving him several years, right? About five oh, years? Oh, I, I think Todd Combs will be here for f 40 years. Has he started to buy anything yet? I don't even look at it. When do you think you'll start to look at it? Uh, just by accident. I never looked at Lou Simpson. Hmm. Lou Simpson managed $3 billion or something like that. I never looked at his portfolios. I talked to him. He wasn't keeping any secrets. You mean never in this whole time? I never looked at, his, at the whole holdings at once. Really? There's very little needless action around Berkshire. 
he had total discretion. Warren was looking at it. There was no, absolutely no reason for me to do it. So eventually Todd will, will so to, Todd will in many ways assume a role like a, like a Lou Simpson. Of course. And will there be other Todd Combses to be hired? I hope so. We have a lot of money and more comes in every year.